Ever since I made bangers a few months ago, I've been chomping at the bit to get back after it. So I figured why not make a little bit of homemade Italian sausage. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Sound good? Let's cook. So the first thing we need to do before we even get into the filler is we need to soak our casing. I'm gonna be using all natural hog casing. Yes, it is hog intestine. That is what you use when you make sausage, no matter what kind of sausage. So it is usually packed in salt. So what we're gonna do is just completely cover it in cold water and let it sit. But this is great timing because then we can get started on our pork shoulder and trim that up. I've got two roughly four and a half pound each bone-in pork shoulders. You can of course use pork butt as well. And if you can find one pork shoulder that weighs anywhere in between eight and 10 pounds, that's perfect for this recipe. They usually range about three to 350 per pound. So the yield on these are really, really good. And all we wanna do here is just trim the meat away from the bone, nothing more than that. We'll take a look at it afterwards to see if it needs any other trimming, like getting rid of sinew or silver skin. But for now, we're just gonna follow the bone around the meat. Transferring the meat right onto the cutting board and using a very sharp boning knife. Again, I just want to carve around the bones, exposing as much meat as possible. Now for me, I'm gonna take a little time to do this because I want every little square centimeter of meat even carving in between the bones. Now at the end, it should look like this. And guess what? You do not have to throw this away either. If you wanna make pork stock, I highly recommend it. Just pop it in the freezer until you're ready to use it and then continue on with that other pork shoulder trimming in the exact same way. And maybe you're wondering to yourself, why is there so much meat? Well, you know me, I'm Italian. I cook for the neighborhood. I can't make a meal for two. I gotta cook for everybody. But a beautiful thing about Italian sausages once we make it, once we encase it, it freezes so well. You can pull it out for so many different things. And I don't make sausage every day, so when I make it, I wanna make a lot. Okay, so what we're gonna do here really quick is give a once over. Make sure there's no silver skin or even bone fragments if we trimmed it too close to the bone when we were doing that. Then we're gonna cube it. And as I'm going through, I can see a couple little bone fragments where I carved just a bit too close to the bone. It's totally okay. That's the whole purpose of doing this once over. If you've got any rough sinew or silver skin as well, you're going to want to remove that. And if you have parts of the fat that are more stringy, that aren't going to grind well, aren't that nice pillowy fat and aren't going to taste good, remove that as well. And then what I want to do is just cube it up. You can go anywhere from a half inch cube to a one inch cube, even a two inch cube, pending your meat grinder can handle it. Just going to add it to a bowl, place a little plastic wrap over top, putting it in the refrigerator, let it cool for about 20 minutes. We wanna make sure it's really cold as we run it through our machine. All right, Comies, for a little bit more fat, a little bit more flavor, what you can do is cut up two pounds of pork belly and mix it right in before adding it in the refrigerator, just like I did in my bangers recipe video. Now, I don't necessarily think you need it because pork shoulder has a great lean to fat ratio, and it's definitely more cost effective to just use a pork shoulder. All right, really quick, what we're gonna do is give a quick wash and dry to our cutting board, and then, perfect timing, let's crank out those spices to add into our Italian sausage. And there are a number of different things that you can put in Italian sausage. Some of it's going to be up to you. Now, non-negotiables to me are gonna be salt, pepper, fennel, basil, and oregano. A lot of the other things I'm putting in there are additional, but they are definitely going to enhance the flavor. Now, you can use a mortar pestle here, but we wanna crush up, especially the fennel seed and coriander seed. So I'm gonna use a spice grinder for that. So we're gonna add in two tablespoons of fennel seeds one tablespoon of coriander. We're gonna give this a really quick pulse. Again, we just wanna break it up. We're not looking to finely ground this. This is perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is add in one tablespoon of oregano, one tablespoon of basil, got about a half teaspoon of nutmeg, got one tablespoon of paprika, two tablespoons of sugar, all right, hopefully this all fits. I've got a tablespoon of pepper. I've got three tablespoons of sea salt. I know that seems like a lot, but I've got nine pounds of meat here. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. We're just gonna really pulse this to mix it together. All right, this looks really good. We're just gonna set this to the side real quick. 
Next, I'm going to grate about 10 to 12 garlic cloves on a microplane. I want to render about two tablespoons. If you're a little more, a little less, no problem. Now I've got the zest of one whole orange, again, grated on a fine zester. And then I've got a half bunch of parsley, and I almost always use exclusively Italian flat leaf parsley. In addition, I also like to use the stems. I feel there's so much flavor in them, and it's just a waste of money to throw them away. And what we're looking to do here is just to finely, finely mince it. It's going to add a little flavor and going to add a touch of freshness to our Italian sausage. One of the really cool tricks that I learned way back in the day to make sure sausage is juicy and tender is to make sure it has a lot of moisture. And the way to do that is to incorporate some shaved ice. Super cool trick, love it. Now you can add this to like a plastic bag and beat it with a mallet, or you can do it in a food processor. Either way is fine with me. Just obviously adding some ice right to the food processor, putting on the lid. Now I'm going to pulse it until it looks like shaved ice. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you get a snow cone, you put syrup on it. That's what I'm going for. Just going to transfer it over and put it in the freezer until I'm ready to pull it out when I need it. After decades of abuse, and I'm sure you saw me trying to grind down the pork in my bangers video, my KitchenAid finally gave out. So I got a new toy. So it's time to make a whole bunch of sausage. What we're gonna do really quick is just assemble it and get grinding. After we fix the feeding tube, we're going to screw it down. And again, all of these apply to every single grinder out there. Next, we place in the auger, the blade, which will always face outward. And I have a 10 millimeter die here. This should work perfect for what I'm going for. Then going to screw on the end cap to make sure it's held in place. Next, going to add the feeder bowl on top, and then of course a catch pan. Turn it on, and then really just begin adding a few handfuls of cut pork at a time. Mine can handle about six pounds per minute, so I'm gonna get through this very, very quickly. You'll see the ground meat start to come out on the other end. And whenever I make sausage, honestly, it doesn't look like the most appetizing thing here, but I promise it's going to be delicious. Now at the end, a little trick, take about a two foot piece of plastic wrap, Scrunch it up and just feed it through. It will actually push all the meat through the dye, clean it up really, really well, and will not hurt the machine in any way. Once it's all out there, I'm going over to the sink and we're gonna wash this all up with soap and water. And that thing just ground up like a dream. That would have taken me twice as long with the old one. Love it. Okay, so starting to mix in the flavors, I've got about a half cup of good Italian white wine, a nice Pinot Grigio. If you wanna use red, totally fine too. A Sangiovese, Chianti, both would work well. So we're gonna start off with that, okay? Next, we're gonna add in about a cup to a cup and a half of the shaved ice. Remember, this is gonna help keep it very moist, especially when we cook it, all right? Then we have all these awesome flavors that we prepped up, okay? We got about two tablespoons of finely, finely minced garlic. Let's get all of it in there. Next, the zest of one orange third cup of chopped parsley, and then last but not least, our seasoning. Okay, let me just say this. We're gonna start with this. We're gonna cook a little piece, see if we need more seasoning, but let's start with this, see where we're at. Mix everything until it is thoroughly, thoroughly combined. Cannot stress this enough. And then once it is mixed, we're just gonna take a small little piece off, flatten it out, nothing bigger than like a quarter of an ounce. Then in a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil on medium heat, I'm going to quickly cook this. We're talking maybe 20 to 30 seconds a side. That is it. The goal here is to taste it. Does it need any more seasoning? I can tell you right now, it's solid. We are good to go. I'm going to wrap it up again and place it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. When I was at the grocery store getting everything, I stopped by to see how much Italian sausage were, and they were $8.09 for a pack of five. That's about a buck fifty, buck seventy-five a piece. I'm wondering if I can make this cheaper here. I'll do a little cost analysis and I'll share it at the end. I'm just going to quickly finish up washing all the grinder parts with soap and water and then onto the hog casing. It's been soaking in water this entire time. I'm just going to run some cold water through the insides, get out any salt that may be in there, just give it a one good rinse all the way through and then set it to the side. All right, the sausage has been chilling for about 20 minutes. It's nice and cold. I actually put a lot of the parts to the sausage grinder in the freezer too, just to ensure that's super cold. All we really need to do right now, 
It's just assemble this. It's got a different die to go on there and a little tube to make sure it goes in the sausage. Other than that, we just assemble it the same way and then we're gonna stuff it. Once the feeder tube is fixed, again, adding that auger on there. Now we do not need a blade. I've got a wider die. It's about 12 millimeters, only three big holes there. Then we're gonna place on that tube at the end. This is where the sausage will come out, right into the hog casing. Screw it down really well, of course, fit on the feeder bowl. And then what you wanna do is add hog casing one at a time and feed it on the top and push it all the way through until it gets to the back. And then at the end, just tie a knot. You'll probably be able to fit three to four hog casing total on this at a time. Take a nice handful, put it in the feeder tube, and then just press it through while guiding it with your other hand. Now, it's important that you don't overstuff anything, okay? You need some room in this hog casing to actually pinch it and make sausage. But on the other end, if you have some areas that are a little thin, just hold it in place and let it fill up a little more. You're going to need about 15 total feet of hog casing for these sausages. Hey, not too bad for a first go round. I'm just gonna get rid of the end here, all right? And then we just wanna tie a knot. So again, a little bit extra, just getting rid of that at the end, putting it right back in there. It will load right back into the other. Tie a knot at the end. And then we're just gonna continue to repeat this process here until all of the filling is completely used into the casing. And as you fill another one of these hog casings, you will get better at recognizing how full or how thin they need to be before wrapping it. All it does is take a little practice and you will get it, no doubt. And I, and I have to say this really quick, all right, just real quick. This is just one of those things that you can pass down to your kids, do with your kids, bring over family members and make this with them. These are these old school recipes. I don't wanna lose these. I wanna to continue to make these at home. Homemade food from scratch is always better. I always say it. I'm telling you what, these Italian sausages are no different. Look, I'm almost done. And I'm gonna show you how to wrap these and make them real, real pretty to show off to your friends. Just finishing up here with the final last bit of the Italian sausage filler meat. And just as an FYI, each hog casing is about two to three feet in length. And when you get to the end, run another two foot plastic wrap right through to help stuff everything up. And now to tie up everything like a professional butcher here, all right, we're gonna line it up like this so it's equal parts on each side. Just gonna give it a little pinch. Then you go down to about how big you want them, maybe six inches or so, all right? Then what we're gonna do is just wrap this around. Then you take this and push it through, all right? Boom, and then do the same thing, okay? This is why it's so crucial again to have room in your casing, all right? Wrap it around and then come on through. Just like that, perfect. Now that I've got everything down at the end, just going to give it a quick little pinch. And then I wanna tie a double knot here. Make sure everything is sealed in. You can absolutely cut off the excess and boom, you've got perfectly linked sausages. So I'm in about 30 bucks worth of pork, about 350 worth of spices. The only thing I didn't have was an orange. Then I'm in about $1.50 worth of wine. That Pinot Grigio was not that expensive at all. And I used half the hog casing. So that puts me right at $4.50. So $39.50. Now, if I were to buy sausage from the store at $8.09, I'm looking at about $56.50. So I literally saved $16 on this sausage. Now, what if I use the rest of the casing and bought more ingredients, I mean, I would save $30 on sausage. That is huge, especially when this freezes so well. But honestly, it's the techniques too. It always goes back to these techniques. Understanding the spices and how to incorporate those into the Italian sausage blend, tasting it, making sure it's good. Using those techniques about stuffing up the sausage, not overdoing it, making sure you can still wrap them. I'm telling you, all these things, put them into practice. You're gonna make some killer sausage someday and it will always elevate your everyday cooking. This now brings me to making sausage twice in the last 15 years and twice in the last few months. The flavors in this are incredible. I know you're gonna love this. And if you do, you're absolutely gonna love my three classic Italian pastas that you can make tonight. You should do it. I've got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.